is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day. Better is one day. to the house of the Lord. Uh, most of all, welcome to Simeon Baptist Church where we worship God in spirit and in truth. Uh, we want to just thank you for being with us today. If you are with us for the first time, you may learn a little bit more about us through our website, simeonchurch.com. You may go there and learn a little about who we are. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, by going to YouTube dot com a look up a Simeon Baptist Church and be a subscriber become part of who we are and we're also promoting our Bible study through zoom uh, you can be part of that as a non-member uh, we would love to welcome you there you just go to our website once again simeonchurch.com and there is a registration form there that we would love for you to fill out uh, just gives us a little information on how to communicate with you so you know when we have our different Bible studies, the times, uh, what will be studied, and all of those things. So we would invite you uh, to be part of that. And I am excited about what we're getting ready to do here at Simeon. I'm putting an investment in Simeon with all our members uh, where we have partnered with uh, uh, Right Now Media. Right now, media is like the Netflix of anything you want to study in the Bible or have fun with. It's a life tool where you, as a member of Simeon, uh, will receive an email. And you just add in your profile information, and it's free to you. And you can have studies in your home uh, with your children. There are tons of videos uh, about children's ministry and different funny things with our children is leadership uh, videos on there but it's it's a good time for you to be able at home continue to study the word of God and just have a good time uh, in the Lord so look for it as you begin to email here real soon it will be on our website and we want you to be part of that as a member I think you're going to like it if you just put the time into wanting to grow however you want to grow in your spiritual life. Uh, then also, don't forget our tithes and offering. Uh, you may go online to simeonchurch.com, go to online giving, and you may give there, or you may text your givings in. Uh, you can go to the number 615 and you can text in your givings there. It will direct you and lead you in how you should do that. And then we have those folks who just love to mail their stuff in. You can also mail in your tithes and offerings. Be sure to do that because uh, we are always in need of still doing ministry, even though we're outside the church and still there are operation expenses and things to be, be paid. But most of all, you're giving to the Lord. You're giving your best uh, by sacrificing what you have to give to the Lord. Especially in this time of COVID-19, there are many churches that need 
uh, to continue their, their financial giving. So make sure that you do that. But once again, I want to welcome you here to Simeon Baptist Church. We're going to have a good time in the Lord today uh, through the Word of God. Uh, but at this time, we're going to have our praise and worship team come and continue in song. And you just, uh, it, from wherever you are, uh, just enjoy praising God through song and giving Him your worship. Praise and worship team, and, and that song 
total praise. You know, we should always give God praise in spite of our circumstances and in spite of what we do and what we're going through. We can give God praise because God gave us victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You know, as I was thinking about the message today, I was thinking about faith and how faith gives us victory. And that's what I entitled the message today was Faith is the Victory. And we're going to be looking at John 4, verses 46 through 54. And before we do, I want to go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get right directly into the Word. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us in spite of this uncertainty. And we just want to give you the praise, the honor, and glory. And Lord, we just know that even in our homes, we can worship you because we know the church is within us. It's not brick and mortar, and it's not buildings, but it's your Holy Spirit that resides in us. So, God, we thank you and honor you and give you praise this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Faith is the victory. I want to read quickly John 4, 46 through 54 from the New King James Version. And it reads this thus. It says, so Jesus came again to Canaan of Galilee, where he had made water wine. And there was a certain noble man whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. And Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will not by means believe. The nobleman said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servant met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household this again is the second sign Jesus did when he came out from Judea into Galilee. You know, have you ever been to a circus and you've seen elephants that have been secured by a chain or just a stake in the ground? You know, that stake in the ground is only about 18 inches deep. And you have this huge animal that's being tied down by an 18-inch stake. And you begin to ask the question, why doesn't he try to get away? And the answer is simple. It is this, when that, that elephant was a baby, he didn't have the strength to remove that 18-inch stake when he was young, and he comes to the conclusion, I cannot get, get away from this thing. So you have this humongous creature, this elephant, who can root up trees and pulled down trees, but this 18-inch stake has him tied to the ground by a puny little stake. What, what am I getting at here? You see, so many people in this world are chained to the stakes of sin and self and Satan himself, and they could free themselves in an instance if they just believe in Jesus Christ. And my point is, see, we need faith that we can believe the incredible. We need faith that we can receive the impossible. And as we look at this story, it's a story of, of a man that discovered that faith is the key to victory. Faith will help you overcome the world. And this Man was immersed in sorrow and stained in sin and starved just in sin itself. But then he met a man named Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. In just one word, he said, Lord, I believe. He went 
from sobbing to singing. He, he went from weeping to worshiping. Uh, and it was by faith that he, he got himself out of darkness into the marvelous light. And he went from blindness to being able to see. You see, the question is, do you understand that faith leads to victory? You know, we, we all go through things in life. We, we all will have a crisis in our life. We all will somewhere have to call upon the name of the Lord. There's going to come a time, if you haven't called upon him, one day that you will. And I call that crisis faith. Crisis faith, and it brings me to my first point, is that crisis faith is the starting point to victory. Let me say that again. Crisis faith is the starting point to victory. So let's, let's look at the story. In verse 46 and 47, it says that Jesus came to Cana of Galilee where he made water wine. There was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea to Galilee, he went to him and implored him. In other words, he begged him to come down and heal my son, for he is at the point of death. Now, I want you to get an understanding of who this nobleman is. This is a man that is an officer in the king's court. He is a man of prominence. He is a man that has position. He has power. But he was a desperate man. He, he was a man that was in crisis crisis because his son was about to die. His son needed healing. And he had traveled miles. It said, the word says he had traveled 20 miles to find this man who had been healing people. You see, this is an emergency room type faith. He was in a crisis. Sometimes we have emergency room type things that happen in our lives where we just get up and we go because it's emergency. You see, even though this man had money, money was no problem for him. Even though he had influence in the highest palace, even though he had hired the finest, the best doctors, he purchased the best medicine, he still had a problem. And that problem was, was that his son was at the point of death. And all he could do was watch the life of his son slowly ebb out of him. He was in a crisis. And for the first time in his life, he began to realize that money was of no use. And I want you to understand about money, because some of us think money will get us by. But money can keep poverty from your door, but it can't keep problems out of your life. It only takes one visit to the doctor and you'll learn immediately just how little money needs. And this nobleman, he learned that there are some things that money cannot buy. You see, money might buy you a degree, but it cannot buy you wisdom. Money can buy you people but it cannot buy you friendship. Money can buy you influence, but it cannot buy you respect. Money can buy you a house, but it can't really buy you a peaceful home. Money can buy you pleasure, but it cannot buy you peace. You see, money can take you everywhere except to heaven, and it can buy you almost anything except eternal life. You see, this man had a crisis and he had crisis faith and he had to cry out to the one that could heal his son. Crisis faith would have you call out to God when you have ignored him. The crisis faith would have you cry out to God when you have rejected him. Crisis faith will have you cry out to God when you did not believe in him. Crisis faith is 
the point, the starting point to victory. As a matter of fact, this, this COVID virus this, 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 that's going on has many calling out to the Lord right now every day when they originally did not do that. Many are on their knees now who normally are not on their knees. You see, they are in a crisis, and this is crisis faith. So that is the first starting point to having faith and having victory in faith. My second point is this. Uh, first is crisis faith is the starting point to victory, but troubles and trials will bring you to Jesus. What am I talking about? I want you to see that it was trouble and trials that brought this man to Jesus. It was a dying son that brought him to a divine Savior. Do you realize that if this man had not known grief, he would never have known grace. If he had not ever experienced tragedy, he might never have experienced triumph. Uh, so often when troubles come our way, we get upset, we get bitter with God. Matter of fact, we get mad at God and we ask God that question. Why did God give me all these troubles in my life? Did you not know that sometimes trouble is brought into your life so that trouble might bring you to Jesus? I, I, I hope you got that. You see, sometimes trouble in life will bring you to God. Well, I want to make a strong statement here about troubles and tragedies that inevitably come into our lives. And I pray that you understand this. You see, when, when you are lost and you don't know the Savior, anything that drives you to Jesus is a blessing. Let me say that again. When you are lost, when you don't know the Lord as your Savior, sometimes trouble will drive you to Jesus, and that is your blessing. You know, whether it's cancer, whether it's a premature death of a child, whether it's the loss of a job, whether it's the desertion of a spouse, anything that drives you to Jesus is a blessing. You see, if this man had not been in danger of losing his son, he most likely would have lost his soul. He most likely would have ended up in Hades or ended up in hell. So crises Faith is the starting point to victory. Troubles and trials will bring you to Jesus. But my third point is faith comes by having the right motive. Faith comes by having the right motive. See, this father comes to Jesus and literally begs him to come to his home and, and heal his son. And that seems to be a normal request. At least I would probably ask that, Jesus, would you come to my house to, to heal my son? But yet Jesus gives him an, a very interesting response. Jesus says to him, he says, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. No man said to him, sir, come down before my son dies. Now, Jesus wasn't just talking to this man. I want you to know that term you is plural. Jesus was talking to the crowd that was standing around. You see, when there is action and where there is action, there is always a crowd. They were looking for miracles. They were, they were sign seekers. They weren't interested in God's kingdom. They, they were not interested in repenting of their sins. They, they were not interested in salvation. They were interested in what Jesus could do. They were interested in signs. They were interested in miracles. They didn't really care about worship. They just wanted to see miracles. They wanted to see wonders. Their motives were off base. Their, their motives were off target. And did you know that that's what the world is made up of? Full of people like that today? I, I believe I could announce 
uh, in the church that we're going to have miracle heal healings here today and the church would be full. I, I just like those ones on TV who have the handkerchiefs. I have healing handkerchiefs. If you come in church today, you'll be healed and the church would be full. I, I could say we're going to handle some snakes today. Uh, they would be all up in this place everywhere. They would just come for the show wrong motives and that's when people show up for wrong motives and that's the very same people that would not cross the street to hear someone preach the word of God in the power of the Holy Spirit and to see people saved and to get right with God oh no they wouldn't go there if someone is preaching the word of God when someone is speaking truth to save your soul oh they don't want to hear that but you give them a show you give them a miracle and they will show up. You see, uh, they have never learned that the miracles of grace are far greater than worldly miracles. And the question is, are you a sign seeker? Or do you just come to church just to see miracles done or hearing somebody's testimony of what God has done for them, but not truly come with a repentant heart and a repentant spirit? Uh, uh, let me give you an illustration. Now, if a man had a serious accident and he only had a few minutes to live, and now, now, now suppose you had the ability to heal him at that point, and after you healed him, he would live a life but would eventually die and go to hell. Or let us look at it a little different. Or suppose you could, in the last moment of the man's life, save his soul by having him acknowledge who his Lord and Savior is, but he died. Which would be better? Now, you answer that question. Well, obviously, you probably would say it would be much better for the man that was saved, that he might have eternal life. And let me ask you the question, which would you rather see? You see, my point is this. There are people who would drive 100 miles to see a man miraculously healed, but who would not walk 100 feet to see a man be saved. So Jesus says to the crowd, you don't need a sign. You need a savior. You don't need a miracle. You need a master. You see, you can believe in miracles without believing in man. And the man's, the nobleman's problem was that he was more interested in the power of Jesus than he was in the person of Jesus. You see, Christ's faith is, is the starting point to victory. Troubles and trials will bring you to Jesus. Faith come by having the right motive, but also confirm your faith in Jesus Christ. What do I mean? Now, Jesus did what this man wanted him to do, but notice he didn't do it the way the man wanted him to do it. And the man wanted Jesus to come to his house, lay hands on his son, and he would be healed. Uh, he eventually thought that Jesus was, was going to, to get within healing range. But you got to understand uh, that, that distance for Jesus does not make any difference because he has unlimited power in time and space. Uh, I, I, could, I couldn't help but think about the difference between this man's faith and the, remember the story about the faith of the centurion who came to Jesus also because his son was sick. And Jesus refused to go to the nobleman's house, but he offered to go to the centurion's house. So the nobleman says to Jesus, come, heal my son. Jesus says, I won't come. But he says to the centurion, I will come and heal your son. But the centurion says, don't come. You can do it right where you are. Now, why would Jesus go with the centurion, but he would not go with the nobleman. Well, here's my thought on that. Jesus was more interested in the nobleman's faith than he was with his son's sickness. I want you to get that. That Jesus was more interested in the man's faith than he was in his son because Jesus could heal his son anytime. But without faith, the nobleman's life would be lost. You see, what am I saying? God is more concerned with your faith than he is with your finances. God is more concerned with your faith than he is with your fitness. God is more concerned with your faith than he is with your fortune. You see, you can, you can 
be in the greatest shape in the world. You can have more money than money can have for you. You can have a beautiful family. You can have live in a castle. You can drive 10 Mercedes Benz. You can be CEO, but without faith, you will never please God. While this man was harping on Jesus' healing. Jesus was focusing on the man's faith. It's crisis. Faith is the starting point. Troubles and trials will bring you to Jesus. Faith comes by having the right motive. Confirm your faith in Christ. But another point, declare your faith in God. Declare your faith in God. Jesus said to him, go your way. Your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. Jesus said to this man, your son lives. Eventually, the man just simply says, I believe you. That's real faith. That's what real faith is, believing. Just believing that God would do what he says he can do. That's, that's real. Real faith is just believing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Of God. You see, this man had to learn a lesson. He, he thought like the world thinks, that, that believing is sin. Now, Lord, if you come to my house and you lay hands on my son, then my son will be healed because I can see it with my own eyes. You see, that's not real faith. And, and, and I'll believe in you if you come and lay hands on my son and he lives. No, that's not real faith. And, and Jesus wasn't taking the bait. Matter of fact, he says, no, I won't give you my presence at all, but I will give you my promise. Your son is healed. Man, what an awesome, you know, I will give you my promise. You know, God has never lost a promise. He, he, he stands on what he says. He says, I don't have to be there. Your son is healed. And, and at that exact moment, when, when the nobleman finally hit that fork in the road where it is, it's either have faith or doubt, faith or doubt, faith or doubt, he had to make a decision. He had to, had to go on the highway of faith or the rocky road of doubt. And he made a decision, I'm going to believe you, Jesus. I'm going to believe what you say. You see, see, see Lord, Lord, you said it. it. It's settled, and I believe it. Case closed. Case closed. You know, so many people are looking for the work from God when all they need is the word of God. Now, now I want to tell you, if the word of God is not good enough for you, then the works of God won't be either. And, and, that, and that's that whole point. So Christ's faith is the starting point to victory and trouble and trials will bring you to Jesus. Faith comes by having the right motives, confirm your faith in Christ, declare your faith in God. But I want you to understand victory comes in the demonstration of your faith. Victory comes in the demonstration of your faith. What am I getting at? Now, what does the man do when Jesus tells him his son is healed? He went on his way. Now, it's fascinating because we know this man, he did not go home immediately. And as we can see, even though it says his son lives, he went a different direction. Matter of fact, it says he stayed in Canaan for a time. Because he believed, he knew his son was healed. Now, I don't know why he went to Canaan, whether it was for business, visiting friends, or whatever, but I can just picture this man walking around town, seeing some friends, and they come up here to him saying, what are you de doing here? I heard your son has died. And I can see him saying, oh, no, not at all. He, he hasn't died. He hasn't died. No, 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 no. Uh, have you... And they, I can see them saying, you need to get home. Your son is about to die. No, my son lives. Well, how do you know your son is alive? How do you know your son is healed? And I can see the man saying, because Jesus told me. Jesus told me he was healed. Real faith. Faith is the victory. A demonstration of his faith is showing that to the world. Oh, my son lives. Why? Because Jesus said he lives. I, I can hear someone says, well, well, you don't think you ought to go home and check? 
And I could see him saying, do you think I need to get up in the morning to check to see if the sun is rising from the east? Real faith. That's faith. And I know some of you are probably saying to yourself, I can never have that type of faith. Well, let's, let's look at this scenario. When we get sick and go to a doctor who will tell us we have a disease we can't spell, he'll write out a prescription that we can't read, give us a medicine that we can't pronounce, take it to a druggist that we don't know, and we'll go home and take it and expect to feel better in the morning. Now, if you have that kind of faith in a doctor and a druggist, how much more should you have faith in the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Messiah, the Savior, the Redeemer in Jesus Christ? And that's the wonderful thing is that we can trust God in what he says. If we can trust man, certainly we can trust God who created man. Let me conclude this and so we can get out of here. Now, through all of this story, we find a sinner in the nobleman who became a saint. Let me say this. Nine out of ten Americans say they believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but only three out of ten Americans have received him as Lord and Savior. You see, the Bible, in the Bible, there are plenty of levels of faith. In fact, in verse 50, it says this man had a satis basically a satisfied faith, and now he has saving faith because at first he believed in the promise of Jesus, but now he believed in the person of Jesus. At first he believed in what Jesus said, but now he believes in who Jesus is. He believed in the miracle, but now he believes in the Messiah. He, he believed in the sign, but now he believes in the Savior. I want you to understand this well, that salvation is more than believing in the Word of God. Salvation is more than believing in the Word of God. It is believing in the God of the Word, the God who created the Word. You see, this man wanted Jesus to heal his son. Jesus wanted to, to heal the man's soul. It's two, two different things. The man was looking for healing for his son, and Jesus was looking for healing of the man's soul. So the highlight of the story was not the, the son's physical condition or the, the son's physical cure, but it was the father's spiritual conversion. Matter of fact, John closes by saying this. This again is the second sign that Jesus did when he came out of Judea into Galilee. Do you know why Jesus performs signs and wonders and miracles? Well, the Word tells us. John tells us in John 20 and 30 and 31, it says, And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not even written in the book, but these are written. Now, here, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. It is written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is the Son of God, and that you believe you may have life in his name. You see, let me conclude then like, like this. Jesus never performed miracles for miracles' sake. Jesus never healed for healing's sake. Jesus never healed for bragging rights. Jesus never healed just to show that he had all power in his hands. Jesus never healed for ego purpose. All of this was done so that we might believe and have eternal life. All of this was done so that we can see that having faith is having the victory. And the victory is in Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross, the one who carried our burdens on his back, the one who took the spitting, the one who took the slapping, the one who took the crowns on that were pierced in his in his head it was that jesus that we have victory in because he is the one that went to the cross and went to the tomb but rose three days later that we can have victory over death because he was resurrected three days later that's our jesus that's why faith is the victory. And the question for you, do you have faith? Do you believe there is victory in believing who Jesus is? And if that's the case, thank you. You are a believer. You have true and real faith. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. 
We know that faith is our victory because it is our hope in you. And Lord, there may be someone out there that does not know you and needs to receive you as Lord and Savior. God, we pray that you would touch their heart to believe, to come to you, to seek you, that they may have life and life eternally. Father, we thank you for the word today, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, there may be somebody out there today that does not know the Lord, has never given their heart and life to Jesus Christ. We want to give you the opportunity to do so. We don't want the devil stealing your joy because that's why he comes, to kill, steal, and destroy. But Romans 3.23 tells us that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and, and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. You know, it's amazing that Jesus demonstrated his love for us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried and was raised from the dead three days later according to the scripture. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, to him that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins you know for with the heart you believe and are justified and is with your mouth that you confess and are saved and there may be someone out there today that may need to just get on your knees lift your hands to the Lord and just surrender to him you know Jesus died for purpose he died for you and for me and he wants us to have companionship with him in eternal life in heaven. So if you were there today and you would like to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, there's a number I would like you to call into. The number is 615-549-5924. 615-549-5924. Call into that number. We'll have uh, folks there that will receive your call and get back with you. I think the most beautiful thing in the world is to see an unbeliever accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and to get involved with the church, get involved uh, with other believers that they can share with you how God changed their life. So if you would like to do that, I'm going to pray quickly. And if you just repeat after me, following that, you are a child of God. So Pray with me right now. Father in heaven, I am a sinner. I ask that you forgive me of my sin. I repent and turn to you. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, but I also believe that he was raised from the dead by his father. Father, please accept me as your child. I ask the Holy Spirit to come into my life Oh, Lord, just thank you for accepting my prayer. I just want to be a follower of you. So thank you, Father, for just the chance to be a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, as we have this time of invitation, the choir was going to sing a song, our praise and worship team. And once again, if you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, call in to this number, 615-549-5924. And if you have a prayer request, you can also call in to that number. I praise God for the word today because we have victory because of our faith. Faith is the victory.
I truly want to thank you for being with us on this day as we have been blessed in the Word of God. And you, you truly can have faith and you can have victory because faith is the victory. Uh, faith is what we all have. God has given that to us, uh, that uh, just believing in who he is. So there is victory in just having faith. Thank you once again for being with us on this day. And we just want to leave as we normally do, as we sing, I have a hope, because we have a hope in Jesus Christ. And that's part of your faith and belief in him, that he is our hope and he is our victory. Come on, praise and worship team, take us out.